In June of 1945, while serving as an escort and close air support ship, USS Pittsburgh was caught by one of the most furious typhoons that have ever assembled in the Pacific. As several ships risked colliding with each other, the winds increased to up to 70 knots, and massive waves reached heights of 100 feet. Displacing 13,600 tons, armed with nine devastating 8-inch caliber guns, 12 5-inch caliber Mark 12 guns, over 40 Bofors autocannons, and 20 Ehrlichan automatic cannons, the Baltimore-class heavy cruiser proved extremely lethal when used for the Pacific theater of World War II. However, Pittsburgh's desperate clash was now against nature. Suddenly, a maddened wave struck her bow and tore it apart. And as the bewildered sailors witnessed the event, they were sure they would all succumb to the mercy of the typhoon. But the crew should have known better, as USS Pittsburgh surprised them all with her resilience and would not go down without putting up a monumental fight. Heavy Cruisers Following the outbreak of the war in Europe, after the German and Soviet invasion of Europe in 1939, the U.S. Navy realized it was time to upgrade its fleet. And political clashes between the United States and Japan only exacerbated this urgency. The conquest of Manchuria, the war in China, the hostile takeovers of former European colonies, and the apparent invincibility of both the Imperial Army and Navy prompted the U.S. Navy to initiate studies to develop a new class of heavy cruisers. The Navy's proposed idea could not have come at a better time. With the war's outbreak, the limitations imposed by the London Naval Treaty of the late 1930s were no longer mandatory. The treaty significantly limited the growth in naval technology, putting restrictions on a ship's size, tonnage, maximum gun caliber, and the overall size of a country's maritime force. It also specifically banned the construction of heavy cruisers. With their hands free, the Navy could now move forward with its Baltimore-class ships. The base design was heavily inspired by USS Wichita, a post-war heavy cruiser launched in 1937, and the Cleveland light cruiser class, which was still under development. Four Baltimore-class heavy cruisers were then approved for construction on July 1, 1940, and a dozen more were authorized months later. However, work on the ships slowed down after the U.S. suffered several setbacks against the Imperial Army and Navy during the first year of the war. Once the first 14 ships were delivered, the design was modified and upgraded to make it more effective. USS Pittsburgh was one of them. USS Pittsburgh The Baltimore-class heavy cruiser USS Pittsburgh, call sign CA-72, was the third vessel in United States naval history to bear the name of the famous industrial city in western Pennsylvania. The cruiser was 674 feet long, 70 feet wide, and had a draft of 23 feet. Her funnels were 86 feet high, and the highest point on the masts was 112 feet. Pittsburgh displaced 13,600 tons and was protected by a vertical belt armor that was 8 inches thick. Meanwhile, her deck armor was up to 3 inches thick, while the turrets were between 1.5 and 8. Her main armament consisted of three turrets with three Mark 15 8 inch caliber guns. Two were placed forward and one aft, and they each fired 335 pound shells at up to 30,000 yards, enough to penetrate six inches of armor plating at about 20,000 yards. Still, they would later prove ineffective against the heavily fortified bunkers the Japanese had built at Iwo Jima and Okinawa. Secondary armament comprised 12 5-inch caliber guns in six twin mounts, which were placed in twos across the ship to be used against both ground and air targets. They had a maximum range of 17,000 yards and could reach aircraft at an altitude of almost 13,000 yards. Additionally, Pittsburgh carried 12 quadruple mounts of Bofors 40mm guns and between 20 and 30 Ehrlichan 20mm cannons. The armament was complemented by SG radar systems for surface targets and SK systems for airborne threats. She also had space for two aircraft catapults located on the side edges of the aft deck. Pittsburgh was steam-powered. She had four shafts, each equipped with a propeller, and they were turned on by steam turbines, while her maximum registered speed was 33 knots. She could also carry 2,250 tons of fuel, and at a cruising speed of 15 knots, the ship had a range of about 10,000 nautical miles. All in all, the ship was manned by a crew of 61 officers and 1,085 sailors. To the seas. 
USS Pittsburgh was launched on February 22, 1944, under the sponsorship of Mrs. Cornelius D. Scully, wife of the mayor of Pittsburgh. By this point in the war, the tide had been slowly changing against the Empire of Japan. The Emperor's will was no longer enough to help the economy recover from Allied bombing incursions into mainland Japan and other occupied territories, and the country's morale was waning down. Meanwhile, despite the increasing number of U.S. Army, Navy, and Marine Corps casualties as they went from one campaign to another, the island-hopping strategy successfully pushed back the enemy into its home territory. The vast extent of the Japanese Empire was shrinking as every day passed, and when the Marines landed on Peleliu in September of 1944 to fight one of the war's bloodiest battles, USS Pittsburgh and her crew were eager to join the fray and support the war effort. The Baltimore-class heavy cruiser was finally commissioned at Boston a month later, on October 10th, with Captain John E. Gingrich as the ship's commander. However, the crew was still missing some fundamental training before venturing into Japanese-infested waters, and they conducted several naval exercises with other ships on the East Coast and the Caribbean Sea. Finally, on January 13, 1945, the ship and her crew departed for the Pacific. War in the Pacific before making her way toward the volcanic island of Iwo Jima, Pittsburgh was assigned to Task Group 58.2, which was formed around the aircraft carrier Lexington CV-16, also known as the Blue Ghost. For Operation Detachment, the U.S. Fifth Fleet was expected to provide amphibious lift, gunfire support, air cover, and logistical support to Task Force 56, which would conduct the Marines' amphibious landings at Iwo Jima. D-Day was set for February 19, 1945, and the more than 60,000 U.S. servicemen that would take part in the assault were expected to face about 20,000 Japanese troops dug in across a volcanic island whose strong point, Mount Suribachi, was an impenetrable fortress. In the meantime, USS Pittsburgh conducted airstrikes against airfields near Tokyo between February 16th and 17th, as well as on the Ryukyu Islands two weeks later. The men aboard Pittsburgh were warned that Japanese defensive doctrine had evolved since 1944, and the Battle of Peleliu proved that. The Japanese had given up on their attempts to repulse Allied forces from establishing beachheads on their islands, and instead adopted a step-by-step -step battle of attrition, forcing the Marines to fight them from one well-defended zone to another. Coupled with the total U.S. air superiority, the Japanese constructed what author Carson Fries from the Naval History and Heritage Command described as, quote, mutually supporting, deeply sighted, and heavily fortified strong points, bunkers, and artillery positions, often connected by extensive tunnel systems with stockpiles of ammunition and food. The Japanese response to overwhelming American firepower was simple. Dig in, and dig deep. With this in mind, the U.S. naval forces were focused on heavily pummeling the island with preparatory bombardments to clean up the Japanese positions before the Marine Corps' landings. Then, as the ground forces slowly moved into Iwo Jima, USS Pittsburgh was busy shelling other enemy strongholds at Kyushu. On March 19th, while attacking an enemy airfield in the exact location, the USS Franklin aircraft carrier was hit by two Japanese bombs that set her flight deck on fire and led to a power loss. However, before the Japanese aircraft approached for a second round, Pittsburgh provided fire support and rescued over 30 sailors on the water. With the help of the light cruiser Santa Fe, Pittsburgh managed to tow Franklin back to safety before she became a sitting duck. Following these events, USS Pittsburgh became an escort for aircraft carriers during the invasion of Okinawa. And between March 23rd and April 27th, the cruiser provided close air support against Japanese kamikaze attacks, assisting wherever the fight became more desperate and brutal. The Longest Ship in the World On June 4th, 1945, Pittsburgh and the entire Task Group 38.1 were caught by a violent and relentless typhoon after conducting a successful operation in southern Japan. As ships were enveloped by the storm and attacked by furious waves and high winds, the float plane on Pittsburgh's port catapult was blown off. The winds then increased to 70 knots and the waves reached a height of up to 100 feet. As the ship battled to get out of harm's way, she was hit by two colossal waves. Her bow was thrust upward and sheared off, but no life was lost. Despite the bow's loss, Pittsburgh bravely resisted and was held quarter on to the seas by engine manipulations. After seven long hours of holding firm, the storm finally dissipated and the ship was able to sail to Guam for repairs. Once there, 
the engineers concluded that Pittsburgh had lost her bow due to poor plate wheels at the Bethlehem Shipbuilding Company. Then, on June 10th, the USS Muncie tugboat recovered the ship's bow and took it to Guam. This earned Pittsburgh the nickname of the longest ship in the world, as thousands of miles separated her bow and stern. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of USS Pittsburgh's desperate fight against the typhoon. Also, hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.